We got off track a little bit on Coach K, but I did want to ask because you have not only played under him, but also coached with him for uh, a few years. What is the craziest thing that Coach K did, whether it be in practice, that a story that we haven't maybe heard yet? He did a lot of crazy stuff. Um, you know, he was he he would. There were times he would come into the locker room and have um, have something set up for us. Um, before a game we played my freshman year, we were playing Louisville, and back then Louisville, they were their nickname was the Doctors of Dunk, and they went to the Final Four that year and played in that iconic game with with Phi Slamma, uh, Slamma Jamma in the in the Final Four, and you know we had had some ups and downs during the course of the early season, and. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, we're we're waiting for his pregame speech and the lights went out and we're like, what else is going to go wrong? Like now we have no power. And uh, I mean, we immediately went to the negative to, you know, we, we took a trip to negative town and all of a sudden <laughs> we see this flickering light coming down the hallway and and he's got a candle in front of his face. So all you could see was his face in this pitch darkness. And all he said was, I came not to praise Louisville but to bury them and blew the candle out and all the guys started jumping up and, you know, screaming. And then we ran out on the court and we had a great first half and then they kicked our ass in the second half. Oh, uh, no. So we lost the game. And I don't, that, that was the last time we saw the floating head candle thing. Um, you know, if you don't win, he doesn't do that kind of stuff uh, again, but he, he does stuff like that from time to time. Uh, I was already gone, but he came into the locker room one time dressed as uh, as Rocky with uh, boxing gloves on and a robe and, uh, I think he did a thing as uh, uh, from Gladiator for the team one time where he came <laughs> in dressed as Russell Crowe and uh, Maximus Decimus Meridius, I guess. Um, so he does that. He, not, not very often, uh, but he does. He, he would do some, some stuff like that from time to time. I love that because we only see him in a suit, you know, and, yeah. and just kind of locked in. But I can't even imagine him with like a, can a candle. Those are kind of tricky. Chin. Yeah, those <laughs> yeah. are kind of tricky. Um, like for Coach K, because he, he like people don't most people don't know this. Like he's insanely funny. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, you don't see it as much during the, the course of the regular season because he is a, he's pretty intense. Um, but, but he's really funny and, uh, and very quick witted on comebacks and, and stuff like that. But I, I think sometimes when you do some of the, uh, some of that stuff, it can, it can take you off a little bit. Um, and it, you know, it depends on your team and how they're going to, how they're going to process it. You know, you don't want to yeah. do anything that's going to, you know, get a, guys are going to be making fun of you later on, but, um, <laughs> but he, he's, he could be really funny sometimes unintentionally, like sometimes he'll make a mistake. Uh, when he's talking to you. And that's that's the thing that, that we would seize on. Like he has this, uh, you know, he's from Chicago and he, he, he uses the word yo a lot. Like, so he'll say, hey, yo, do this. Yo, yo. Like he's constantly saying that to get people's attention or start a sentence or whatever. And I think, I can't remember, it was my freshman year. Uh, we played a team that had a guy on the team named Yo. His, na his name was spelled Y-O-H-E. And so we caught on the scouting report. And then when we went out to do our scout, when we were going through drill work, uh, you know, every time we'd get a hand up uh, on the shooter, somebody would go, yo, they would just, we, we were saying, yo, every five seconds pointing at the guy, yo, yo, watch out for yo. And, uh, and coach K caught on after a while and said, Hey, I hear you guys saying, yo, like, that's real <laughs> funny. We'll see how funny it is when yo is kicking your ass tomorrow, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So you had to be, you had to be a little careful, uh, throwing it back at him. To be a fly on the wall during that era would have been really fun. Do you consider him the greatest college basketball coach ever? I do, just because of so I grew up in L.A. and uh, John Wooden was at his heyday when I was growing up. So and he retired in 1975, and so Wooden won ten national championships. Nobody's ever going to approach that again. Coach K won five, uh, and it should have been more. Um, I guess or you could argue it could have been less, but it, I think it should have been more. But um, and he had he knocked on the door a lot, but nobody has done nobody did it at that level for 40 years. Like and he did it all on television. So he's going to be the toughest act to follow in, in basketball history. And I don't think anybody's going to reach that number. Uh, you know, Jim Beheim may coach until he's 80 and do it. But nobody starting now is going to is going to approach that. There's too much money in the game. It's too difficult now. Uh, I don't think you'll see the kind of longevity that, that Coach K had. Um, I don't think you'll see that again. 
And who are your starting five players to ever come out of Duke? To ever come out of Duke? Um, mm -hmm. I would put Grant Hill and Christian Leitner at the top of the list. Those are the two best players Duke's ever had, in my view. Um, J.J. Reddick's the all-time leading scorer and the best shooter. Uh, so I would put Reddick up there. Um, for me, um, like some of the, the one-and-done guys, had they stuck around longer, uh, would be no-brainers there. Um, but since they didn't, you'd probably go with the guys that, that were there longer. Um, you'd probably have to have a point guard there. Uh, so to me, it would be between Bobby Hurley and Tommy Amaker. And, uh, and I'll put Hurley in there. Um, and uh, what else would you need on that team? Um, like maybe a small forward. Um, I would probably go with uh, either Shane Battier or Danny Ferry. Uh, in that last spot. Um, go with Battier because Danny Ferry couldn't guard a chair. So I'd go with Battier. <laughs> so we have Shane Battier, JJ Redick, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill, and, and Christian Leitner. And Christian Leitner. Is that six or five? Did I get five that's, or six? That's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. That's five. Sweet. I like it. What's up, guys? It's Rachel Demita. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Courtside Club. Make sure that you like, rate, and subscribe to ESPN's YouTube channel and wherever you listen to your podcast. We have new episodes coming to you guys every single week, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you soon.